changes things around up here when we, when we have everything darkened out and uh, you don't even realize it, amen, how much that light helps and affects you, even in the morning service, amen, so that's why I put the white screen behind so you don't have to see in black, now, hopefully you can see a little bit of, of me. Not that uh, I think there's a lot to look at, or, but uh, at least it looks better than just seeing uh, a head bobbing. Uh, I'm going to have my dark suit on at least, right? Amen. Turn with me. I'm going to look at... Where's the white coat? Where's the white coat? Where white white coat? Oh. Okay, there you go, brother. There you go, brother. Amen. I'm going to look at several passages of Scripture. First being Numbers, chapter number 21. And I just want to be kind of uh, maybe a little bit transparent, a little bit of where we are tonight. I believe this, um, just believe that we're on the brink of growth and good things happening. I think we're seeing that already by souls coming in. Uh, I just... I feel like it's um, a time to prepare uh, for greater things. As I said this morning, uh, I feel like the Lord is just the stirring inside just what do we do as we look at growth and expansion and what God is going to do. And uh, as I said this morning, and I look to you, several of you folks that are here tonight, uh, all of you, um, as we just set that standard of how we even respect the house of God. As I said that this morning, I appreciated folks. It was phenomenal the way that folks got in. It was almost unanimous. Folks with their eyes closed and just experiencing the presence of God. It was a, a phenomenal moment. Um, and as I said, as it's reaching on toward 1230, and I really didn't want to close the service, but uh, I knew that there are times where we just have to say, God is done doing what he's doing at this moment. Come back tonight. Let's see what else God has. Uh, you know, we're seeing some faces. We've seen some faces this morning. Let's be praying that God sends folks that will be an encouragement and a blessing. I'm not praying for folks who will come and uh, cause division, but I'm ready to move on in a greater force for the kingdom of God than I ever have before. It's not about, I'm at an age in my life, it's not about making a name for myself. I, I could really care less about that. It's not about a power. It's about an impact that we can have. Amen for the kingdom of God. We have a long running stretch that has been great. Amen. And I believe that uh, the, what's in front of us is going to be an even greater stretch and impact that we're going to have for the kingdom of God. And how do we prepare and get ready for that? Amen. What do we do to allow that to happen? And that's where I'm at tonight. Um, that's where I'm at as, as, as a pastor uh, uh, and uh, as, as, a, as a body of believers. I believe that you're there as well, the phenomenal support. Amen. But there's some things that I want to look at quickly this evening. Amen. Numbers chapter number 21, verse number 4. The Bible says, And they journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to compass the land of Eden, Edom. And the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. And the people spake against God and Moses, Wherefore have you brought us up out of, this, out, out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread, neither is there any water, and our soul loatheth uh, this, uh, this light bread. And, and the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned and we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from among us. And Moses prayed for, for, for the people. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent and set it upon a pole. And it shall come to pass that every one that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. And Moses made a serpent of brass and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass that if the serpent had bitten any man, and when he beheld the, the, the serpent of brass, he lived. 
John chapter number 3, I uh, just want a, a very familiar passage of Scripture. Looking even uh, uh, previous, uh, before verse number 16, the Bible says in verse number 14, And Moses lifted up, a, uh, up the serpent in the wilderness, even so... Uh, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now I want to bounce back to another portion of Scripture. I know I'm moving quick, but I'm, I'm, I'm racing the clock here for a few moments. In 2 Kings 18, verse number 1 through 6, the Bible says, Now it came to pass in the third year of Hosea, the son of Eli, the king of Israel, that Ezekiah, the son of Ahaz, king of Judah, began to reign. Twenty and five years old was he when he began to reign, and he reigned twenty and nine years in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Abiah, the, son, the daughter of Zechariah, and he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that David his father father did. He removed all the high places and break, uh, and, and, and break the images, cut down the groves and break in pieces the brazen serpent that Moses had made. For unto those days the children of Israel did burn incense to it and he called it uh, uh, Nehustan. And so I, I, I want to just look at this uh, passage of Scripture and see what we can gain. The Word of God says that here the children of Israel set free from Egypt. Uh, they were uh, uh, on their wilderness wanderings. And the, uh, the Israelites began to get discouraged in the way. Now, if we were going to say that today, the better word that we would use, we wouldn't say discouraged as much as maybe we would use the word impatient in the way. They began to get impatient, amen, and they began to sin and speaking against the Lord, began to sin against speaking about Moses. Uh, they began to sin and longing for Egypt. And God told Moses, uh, 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 and, and well, let me, before I get there, and God sent fiery serpents. Now, when it says fiery, I, I don't know all the details. Did they look like fire in the, in the very design of their body? Was it just that their bite was fiery, that it felt like fire when they got oh, they, they were bitten? Amen. But here it was that these serpents, they were, uh, they were among them because of punishment. And the Bible says that many people died because of these serpents. And so uh, as we look here, we find that God told Moses, I want you to make a brazen serpent and I want you to put it up on a pole. Amen. And when people look upon that serpent, it, they are going to live. Amen. Preceding that most familiar verse of the Bible, John 3.16, we read that where and Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so the Son of Man must be lifted up. I'm talking about Miracle Revival Church. I'm talking about our, our focus. I'm talking about our future. I'm talking about our lives. I'm talking about our evangelism. If there's something that must be done, is the Son of Man must be lifted up. Amen. Amen. We've got to show Jesus to a world who has been bitten, to a world that is dying. we got to show Jesus even to the church goers, amen, who are beginning to murmur and complain. Amen. When people are getting frustrated, when they're getting impatient, amen, the greatest cure is lifting Jesus up. So here it is. The serpent was necessary because of sin, but so is Jesus necessary because of sin. The serpent was a hideous thing to look upon. Amen. The Bible says that Jesus was despised and rejected of men. The, ser uh, the, the serpent was made like a serpent, but it, was, uh, but, but it was not taken from the wilderness. It was without venom. Amen. Jesus looked like a common man. Amen. He was born in flesh and blood. Amen. But he was the second Adam. He was born without sin. He is the one that we got to look to tonight. He is the one that we got to point others to. Amen. The whole vision of Miracle Revival Church is God let us look to Jesus. Let Him be lifted up and may we point others to Jesus. 
I believe that we can be the greatest church in the Northern Dolphin area. Amen. Not because we have the best music, not because we have the best singers, not because we have the latest and the greatest. The reason why we can be the greatest is because we are fulfilling our calling that God has called us to and lifting Jesus up. Amen. Amen. The bite of the serpent was painful and it was mortal, but so is the penalty of sin. Amen. There was certainly no limit. I want you to think about this. There was no limit to how the bite was. If the bite was deep, amen, think about getting bit by a snake. If, if you got bit deeply, amen, that venom is really sunk into you good. Or whether it's a surface thing and that venom gets into you, there are degrees to bites. And where it is on you probably affects you a little bit more. And let's, let's look at this. The length that it has been since you were bitten by the serpent, that certainly affects you. If you're bit by a snake, what do you want to do? You want to get to the hospital ASAP. Get me there. Get me the anti-venom. I want it. I don't care what the price says. I don't care how you got to get me there, but I need to get there. Amen. The sooner, the better. Amen. But when these individuals looked upon the brazen serpent, it didn't matter how far they were along in the process of being bit by a, 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 a serpent. Amen. It didn't matter because as long as they looked, they were healed, whether it was one minute ago or whether it was 24 hours ago and it was working on their body. Amen. They were healed. God is able to save to the uttermost and God is able to save to the guttermost. Amen. And I believe that we as a church, amen, the message has got to be is that we're lifting Jesus higher. Amen. Look upon Him because He saves. He's able to give hope. He's able to give restoration. He's able to give deliverance. Amen. He's the cure from the penalty of the death of the sin. Amen. He can give you life. Amen. That is where I'm at this evening. Amen. Amen. There was only one serpent for the whole camp to look at. One brazen serpent. Amen. And there is no other name by which we must be saved than Jesus Christ. Amen. The heroin epidemic isn't going to do it. Amen. Uh, 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 we, we, we have an epidemic of narcotics being abused even in our own society. It's not going to do it. Amen. We have, we have an epidemic of folks thinking that everybody in the world owes them. Amen. The world owes you nothing and Jesus owes you nothing, but Jesus will give you everything. Amen. 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 And that's the message we've got to preach. Amen. The serpent was made of glistening brass. Amen. What glory there is in the presence of God. What we experienced this morning, what we're experiencing tonight, Amen. I don't need the glitter and the glisten of anything else when I have the glory. Amen, folks. That's what we're going to have. It makes a difference in our lives. It makes a difference in the lives of men and women who are affected by the venom of sin. The verb lifted up it has a dual meaning. It meant that Jesus was going to be crucified. It meant that He was going to be glorified. Jesus said this, and Jesus answered them saying, The hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except the corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. Amen. The serpent was elevated, amen, as an object of faith that anybody who was bitten and they looked at it, it could live. Amen. I want you to know something that we have the power to do right here in this church, and that is to lift Jesus higher. Amen. If the Son of Man be lifted up, He'll draw all men unto Him. Amen. We're not lifting up a brazen serpent. Amen. We're lifting up a resurrected Savior. Amen. It has power and authority over all sin, over all sickness, over all bondage. Amen. He's able to bring deliverance no matter what. Amen. We've got to lift Jesus up. And when people see Jesus, it makes a difference in them. 
I read a story of a painting of, uh, of what, what it was like, amen, of, of the brazen serpent. And the, here it was that there were men and women of all ages that was gathered around looking at the brazen serpent. Some of them had, uh, had, had serpent snakes hanging off of them that had bitten them. But as they looked at that brazen serpent, they were healed. But in the back of the crowd, there was one little lady, amen, and she had a baby. And you could see the bluish uh, 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 double marks in that baby where a serpent had bit that baby. And what she did is she lifted that baby. She lofted that baby. Amen. In such a way, though she couldn't get close to the brazen serpent, she brought that baby there. And then she took the gaze of that baby and took its head and adjusted it so it would see the serpent and the baby live. Do you know what the goal of Miracle Revival Church is? Amen. Let's get them close to Jesus. Amen. Let's turn their head. Amen. That all they see is Jesus Christ high and lifted up. Amen. The one that frees from the bite of sin. Amen. The one that brings deliverance from the venom of sin. He is the giver of life and life more abundantly. Amen. God help us tonight. Amen. The best pole that we can exhibit Christ Amen is the highest one that everyone from far away can see. You know why I like services like today? Because Christ is seen in us when we go away. And the higher we lift Him, the more that other people see Him. And they find freedom from the terrible venom of sin. Give me just a few more moments. You see, it's interesting because coming up on the scene where we read of Hezekiah, here it is that it's over 725 years later. Hezekiah has something he's got to do. It's time to clean house. And 725 years later, there is a brazen serpent that he needs to destroy. And they say, what are you talking about, Brother Sunil? You see, Hezekiah, he was dealing with something because here religious folks, here folks in worship was lighting incense to the brazen serpent that Moses was commanded to make by God in the wilderness. But instead of worshiping God, they were worshiping a tradition of a brazen serpent. They were worshiping what had been. They were worshiping what God had used instead of keeping their eyes upon the Lord. And so here it is, I want you to think about this, that this serpent, it had survived the wilderness journeys. It had survived the crossing of the Jordan. Amen. It had survived that the Ark of the Covenant being taken from the Philistines. It had been through troubled times of the judges. It, 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 it had been through the reign of Saul and David and Solomon. Amen. It had been through the divide of, uh, of the kingdom of Judah. Amen. And so here it is that, that, that Hezekiah, this reformer, amen, he was doing something because he had a heart after God. Solomon had many wives and with his wives came a lot of pagan religion and worship. Amen. Uh, because of, of, of all the pagan uh, uh, wives uh, and their desires, Solomon allowed a lot to happen that should have never happened. Read about other leaders in 1 Kings. The Bible says, but the high places were not, re were not removed. In 1 Kings 15, 14. 1 Kings 22, 20, 43. Nevertheless, the high places were not taken away. 2 Kings 12, 3. But the high places were not taken away. 2 Kings 4, 14. But the, how be it, the high places were not taken away. 2 Kings 15, 4. Say the high places were not removed. 2 Kings 15, 35. How be it, the high places were not removed. But here comes Hezekiah on the scene and he is image destroyer. I love this about Hezekiah. 
Amen. He destroys the religious images. And he opposes what they have been standing for. And he says, I'm getting rid of these institutions that are nothing more than institutions, but doesn't allow the presence of God to live. Where I'm at tonight is this. Let's get rid of the things that doesn't allow the presence of God to live. Mm -hmm. If they're icons that have just been around, amen, and we worship them more than we worship God, it's time to get rid of them. Amen. If there's things that keep us, amen, held back from real worship to God, it's time to get to get rid of them. Amen. It, it's time to get focused upon Jesus. Amen. Here they were, they were moving along, and God was working and moving in their life. That season was over. The, the, the fiery serpent, serpent is done. And now God is trying to work and move, but no one wants to move those things. And it has become just idol worship. What are the things that keeps us from being effective evangelistically? What are the things that keeps us from lifting Jesus up? Amen. What are the things that we have allowed in our life that we shouldn't allow in our life? I look back even over years of, of my pastoring and thinking, you know, there are some things that need to shift and change because it is stopping God from having the liberty that, that He would like to have. Amen. Bringing respect back to the house of God. Amen. Bringing a hunger and a thirst for being in the presence of God and being with the people of God. Amen. Finding faithfulness as our place in the kingdom of God and saying whatever it is, I'm willing to get rid of. I'm willing to do because God, I'm tired of the mundane and I want to move into the miraculous. Here we are. Here we are in a great season. What are the things that we have to say, I'm done with mundane. I'm done with the tradition. I'm done with what has crept in that should never have crept in and been tolerated. And now it's time to get rid of so that God can work and move. That is us individually in our lives. Sometimes just the way of life, fatigue, our jobs, our responsibilities creep in and take away from those areas where God can move powerfully. Sometimes it's just speaking old tradition. Sometimes I ask myself, why do I do this? Because I've done it my whole life. Amen. Now I'm not holding on to that because it could hold me back from what God has for me. And what is it as a body that we have come into the place of? And as I said this morning, you help me, you help me as well to bring a place of great reverence back to God's house. Folks, it was phenomenal in here this morning. It was phenomenal when we took a look at being respectful to the house of God. There was a shift. Let me tell you, the pastor can see it from the pulpit. And oh, the last thing I want to do is hurt somebody. Amen. We are dealing with folks from many, many backgrounds and many, many walks of life. But it will never be a place for God to move. Amen. If we don't work together and encourage one another. Amen. Because I want God to move. I want this to be a place where people can know, and I said it this morning, this is a safe place. We can give our burdens to the Lord. Amen. This is a place where we can pray and we can trust. Because this is a place where God is. I'm asking, I'm asking you tonight, I'm enlisting your help could we just lift Jesus higher? And then as that mama did to her little baby, 
we just set the gaze of folks upon Jesus. Amen. You don't ever need to mention my be simple pastor in the church. I'm just a tool. But what we need to mention is Jesus. Amen. You don't need to mention everybody else's name. But what we lift up in this church is Jesus. And then we get them here. And the snake that's on them, that's biting them, that wants to take their life, Amen. We get them looking at Jesus and they found life and life more abundantly. Because the only thing that's lifted up is Jesus. There's not a particular song. There's not a particular tradition. Some traditions aren't bad. You know, it's the way we practice things. But we don't do it out of tradition. We do it to lift Jesus up. And that is the pastor's heart. Are you with me tonight? Amen. Let's lift Jesus up. Jesus, who is crucified and is glorified, we lift up a glorified Savior. I see the time, and you all have been great today. I have kept you over this morning, and I've already pushed the limits tonight. Look at how I stand. Can we do this? If you're able to stand, stand. If not, it's okay. If it's best for you to sit. But could you just say, Jesus, Spirit of the living God, in my life personally, would you help me to make my pole higher than ever? Amen. I want that pole to show Jesus to a lost and a dying world higher than ever. Amen. If you're the one that has the ability to bring someone to Christ, would you say, even if the crowd is great, I'm going to haul off. God, I'm going to lift them to Jesus. And I'm going to point them that they may gaze upon the one who's able to give life. Amen. I'm going to point them to Jesus. Listen, I work with folks that I love dearly for, for many, many years. They know my love for Jesus. Amen. They know who I am. I don't take off the hat of being a believer. I don't take off the hat of being a Christian when I walk in the workplace. I'm not the pastor there, but I get to do a lot of pastoral care there. Amen. So what I want to do is I just want to put their gaze upon Jesus. Amen. Because we lifted him up. You all have that same ability in places that you go all week long. Some of you have ability in your home to do that. Amen. In your community. Would you just close your eyes? We don't need music. We don't need anything else. All we need is hearts that are surrendered. And would you just lift your hands up to heaven and say, God, amen, my goal, amen, in my personal life, and my goal for Miracle Revival Church is to lift Jesus up. Amen. I want to lift Him up. Amen. I want others to see Jesus. Amen. I'm going to let their face, amen, gaze upon the One who's able to heal. Amen. The One who's able to give life. Amen. The One who's able to give them victory. Amen. I'm going to put their gaze upon Jesus. Amen. Just take a few moments right where you are. Amen. To make that fresh commitment to Jesus. Amen. I'm lifting Jesus up. Hallelujah, 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 Jesus.